Hello once again, welcome to an Oslo video. This video is going to cover text windows and the command line. These are excellent features in Oslo. They are a big reason why I actually use the program. So I'm going to go through the text windows in good detail and give a decent uh, intro, a little bit more depth onto the command line. But the command line you become most familiar with if you start uh, using the program on a regular basis. Hopefully this will get you kicked off and using the command line a little bit because it can be really handy to do a number of different things. So the uh, text window is the primary means to get numerical data out of the program about your system. It's very flexible and it includes a built-in buffer. And I'll talk about this buffer a little bit later, but all of these numerical numbers being output in here in inside of Oslo are actually uh, saved in a buffer that you can access elsewhere, which is great for CCL programming. And it's great even when you're uh, looking to change things inside of the program. So I'll show a little bit more later about that. The command line is really useful and works extremely well with the text window in particular, but it works well with the overall program, including putting things into the graphics window or manipulating other things. These two just naturally go together here because of the way the spreadsheet buffer works. So that's why I'm doing both of them in this particular video. So the text window has this button in the upper left and it allows you to do some window manipulation uh, features here, so or, um, uh, steps here, different things you can do. And there are also these analysis options down below. Now the analysis options just change what toolbars are being shown here. And what these are is they are different sorts of um, commands that you can run. So for example, if I want to know something more about aberrations and I come here and I say, oh, I want to know about first sort of chromatic aberrations. I scroll over if I didn't know what CHR was, I have this handy tool tip that pops up that tells me. Now I click on it and it prints out some chromatic aberration information. By the way, this lens that I'm using for this video is a monochromatic lens because it was a lens design problem from the 1980 International Optical Design Conference. If you go to the public, if you open a file, public, demo, edu, monochromatic quartet or M quartet, that's what this lens is. I turn my draw window off. And so there's no chromatic aberration because I only have one wavelength to find. And this was an interesting problem that was done at that lens design conference as a contest. So getting back to uh, where I was and why these ended up being zero. So this text window has these analysis options. And in terms of other things you can do, if I go here to switch text windows, well, that actually opens a second text window. So you can have two text windows open at any time. Only one of them is active, though. I'm not going to get data into both of these if I click on some particular command or run some menu command. So that's one way to open that. Of course, other ways are to use the text window open. And you can also use the TWO command, text window open. TWO. That's what I typed in really fast. So pretty good stuff. Great stuff in general there on having two windows open and uh, what these buttons do. Now these buttons really aren't necessary because everything can be can be accessed up here in the um, menus. One thing about these of course is they're canned so I don't have an easy way in this case to change my options because if I right click unlike the graphics window where I can recalculate with new parameters can't do that here so in order to actually get uh, the commands here you would have to do something else like know what the command actually called and go back in and I'll get to a little bit of a little bit of that later which is why I'm covering the command line now or you'd have to know where it is uh, in the menus um, that's, I think, all I was really going to say about that, except to point out that you can actually change the number of maximum number of toolbars on the first row in this window, and you can even get rid of that uh, that specific uh, uh, command bar. So lots of things you can do with it. The other thing you need to know about this, and this is extremely important, cutting... Um, copying and cutting and these types of functions with this window do not operate like a lot of Windows programs. And it's just a specific nuance to how the spreadsheet buffer works and how Oslo is programmed that it doesn't operate 
in a uh, normal way if you've never used a program like this before. So it's very important that I explain this. If I want to copy this specific information, I have to select it and then I go and right click and you can see I can copy selection. Now it gives an option to do either dis the displayed precision, which is what you would see here, or the full precision. The full precision will take every number that's in the spreadsheet and print out or a copy into the into your clipboard whatever the full precision number is. So it's not just what you see, it's the actual full precision of these numbers. Now all these numbers are truncated, but you oh no they're not. See this one goes out even further. Um, of course it's an index of refraction for BK7 so that's not a surprise. So this goes all the way out all these extra digits. So if I wanted to copy this I would select it, right click, copy selection and if I want all those numbers I would do full precision or if I just want what's displayed, displayed precision. Really powerful stuff. You'll also notice when I right click here you can print the window, print the page's selection and you can do other things like copy the window page and selection or save them. You can also change the background color, you can change text color and uh, these are some preferences that I'll cover a little bit later as well. This, bo this bottom one actually just clears the window on the spreadsheet buffer is what it actually does. So there, pretty easy to use. Now if I, um, actually I'll cover the command later, I was going to show it, I'll show it now. This was just the RIN command. So it's right there. Um, if I wanted, since this is my three letter command, I'll show in a moment how you can actually easily know how to change or learn how to change the um, parameters that you're calling when you call one of these functions. But to do that, the command line is extremely useful. And of course, the help system's always, always good with that too. The command line has a lot of things that it can do for you. For one thing, it can act as a calculator. So right here, I'm on this image surface. Let's just say I do one plus one. I could just enter that in, one plus one, and I put two in here. So that can be extremely useful because if I want to scale some number or pull a number out of here, this is 71 right now. It's cell B25, and that is the um, fact that this command line has the spreadsheet buffer you can access data in the spreadsheet buffer in two different ways. One is the SSB command, you give a roll and a column. The other is just this cell name. So in this case, it's B25. So right here, if I say B25 and I want to divide it by, let's say 70, now I've put in basically 70, uh, one over 70 is what that number is. So it's extremely easy to do quick algebraic things and add numbers together. And Oslo has even more power in the fact that there's a number of global variables that you can access. So for example, this is TH, uh, this is TH8 uh, is what this one is. That's TH8. Let's say I want to do TH8 divided by 100 here. I can do that and now it's 0.02. So I can do all kinds of, of great things like that because Oslo's command line can act like a calculator. Um, it keeps a history of the commands as I mentioned. So I called RIN by clicking this button, but there's other commands that let's say I come up here and let me just evaluate. Oh, hadn't really thought about this too much. So looking for one I might want to run. Let's just run this thing. It changed this graphics window. I come here and look, I've got this uh, command called. Now, if that was all that the command line did and you would have to go into the, the help menu every single time you wanted to see what a different command is doing. So if I come here to contents and I want to look up the RIN command, which is the refractive index command. I'm sorry about that. Refractive indices. You'll see refractive indices and you don't have to worry about reading these quite yet because I haven't gotten to the programming. But there's actually some function choices you can do here. You can actually put a surface range in. So you don't have to print every single one of them. So I can do RIN. And what if I don't know the command? Well, if I do RIN, it will just actually print and do the defaults, which is all the surfaces. But let's say I don't want to do that. Let's say I only want to look at surface four and five. If I do RIN, Fingers on the wrong buttons there, by the way. RIN, and now 
I put the question mark after I did that too fast. R-I-N, and then I put a question mark. This is a forced prompt, is what this is called. The forced prompt is extremely powerful. It forces the program to ask me, what do you want next? So I can say Surface. And then if I say I want Surface 4 as the first one, Surface 5 is the last one. Now this time it only printed out those two surfaces. I very often give a subset of data to customers and it's extremely easy and fast for me to do that because what I do is I come in here and I just run a few little commands. I just choose a few specific things or I might even write a little CCL program where I call three or four commands and just put the, the data that I want in there and spit it all out and I'm done. And I do that faster than I could actually go in and um, generate all the data and then cut all, a whole bunch of extra data out, the whole wall of text thing, which you'll see in, in some programs. You can still do the wall of text thing by running the basic commands with all the surfaces and running a few of them. You can still do all of that. And I'll show some ways to do that uh, in the course of these, these videos, undoubtedly. So some really, really powerful stuff between the history and the force prompt. You can also look things up in the help here, F1 or Oslo help, or you can just simply type in, ironically, help, and there it is. Okay, last thing, there's a few other um, features and, and, and nice things I wanted to show about this. So again, this is the output echo, which I showed in the graphics. I think it was the graphics video. I showed it in another video. If I turn this on, and then I do things like type in RIN, you know, that command actually pops up. Um, if I do wave, okay, now that one popped up. Um, if I do RIN for, uh, it was surface four or five, SRF four or five. Then look, it says RIN surface four or five. And those are also kept here in the history buffer. I think it keeps 50, some, some number like that. Uh, but in the echo, it keeps all of them. So that's what the echo does. You can just turn it on and off with the right click here and then choosing it. There's another thing called the output log and the output log will take everything that's being put into the text window and dump it into a log file for that session. So you can keep logs of your sessions if you so choose, if you really wanna do that with that specific, uh, that specific feature. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is Oslo does have a whole bunch of global variables. So it's getting a little bit advanced to cover too much into programming. But if I come here under the contents, programming, CCL programming, and actually it's not even there. I think it's actually under the accessing data. There's actually global data. And there's a whole bunch of global variables, A, B, C, D, E, et cetera, et cetera, A string, B string. And some of these, uh, the data that you have, like right here, I used the TH, and the TH had the brackets because it was an array, and C is why that why that had that syntax. Anyway, the um, uh, you can actually look up all of these different global variables. Earlier, I mentioned that this window here, the text window, is very important for Oslo because it is the output window for the program. So I can't type in here, I can't do anything directly into it, but I can do things like print, Rich is a great instructor. Whether you agree with that or not, that's what's now in the text window with this PRT command. If I do another PRT command, it just puts a, a space in, and so I can put something else in here, just like, hi. But I can do more than that. I can actually also print numbers and things like that with the a print command, but it's a little bit tricky to do it. So I'm gonna do something where I say a, which is a global variable equals one plus one. And I'm gonna do a print a, and it printed two here, but it's in the spreadsheet buffer now. So that's getting a little bit advanced. I'm just showing you what you can do with it. So the a print command can be used to actually print things into the spreadsheet buffer, or you can just print things into the text window itself, but they don't actually add to the spreadsheet buffer. The spreadsheet buffer it holds from zero to 4,000 numbers in it. And um, actually zero to 3999 would be uh, how the program actually references it. And you can access that anywhere in the program. Now that I have this number two in here, I can actually say it's A1, but this time I'm gonna do SSB row one, 
column one, and there it put the number two in here where it was zero before. So lots and lots and lots of great things that you can do with that. Uh, last thing I will mention is that you can actually open files inside of a text editor of some sort. So here I have this Notepad++ program. So Notepad, Word, you know, you'd, whatever you want to open, it, open Office, whatever you'd like to use, open it up and you will see a list of commands. And those list of commands will actually, it's actually what's run when you open the file. So Oslo is set up as essentially a set of commands that uh, build files up. Where this comes in useful is if you want to use the same type of thing in every single lens file, you can actually cut it out of one text file. And if you know where to put it in another, it's really useful, but that's a little bit more advanced. What I've shown you today is how to use the text window, a little bit about how to use the command window and how it works with the text window, and a little bit of the power of the command line and all of the different things that you can do with it. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks so much.